All right, ultimately we end up uh, needing to set up our solver. So we're gonna use Garobi in this example. I've, I've installed Garobi on my computer. If you're not sure how to do that, you can look back at the previous video or, or the, uh, the detailed instructions on the, the lab website. And then we end up uh, running this model. Um, there's some different options that I didn't talk about last time when you run the model. So you could just run it with you know, solve model. Here you can also, uh, if you say you want to do some debugging, you can set keep files equals true uh, and then give it a log file name and it'll spit out a more detailed solver log that you can go through and see you know, where things went wrong or if you just want detailed information about the solution. So this should run. Uh, we can look and we actually want to display something about the, the problem, the solution, etc. So I've written out some code that will print out the model summary and then we'll actually print out some of the things we care about. So we wanted to know time, uh, price, power, uh, and the storage level. And so I'm doing that for every single time index in the time set, I'm going to print out a formatted string that includes uh, those things. So if I run this now, we get a result. And so let's look at the uh, actual information that's coming back here. All right, so we have um, run the model, and the first thing we're doing is printing the information that's, uh, that's provided about how we formulated the model. So we see that we have our variables, w, that is of size 12, and the index there is the set of t. And so for each va uh, variable w, we have information on the final optimal solution. Uh, so each variable, we have the value at its, uh, the, the optimal value of that, uh, of that variable, um, and then some information that, you know, on the domain and that kind of thing. So here we have our uh, storage charge state, again, 12 variables there, and we can see how the state of charge varies with time. Uh, we have our objective. The, here's the objective function value that we get. We have constraints. Uh, we have uh, all the different constraints grouped by their, by their function type. So for every time index, you can look at uh, whether or not that constraint is active, uh, the, the limits on the constraint, etc. So the results for the model show, you know, it's just a consolidated version of the information above, but it shows that here's our price schedule. We have a uh, certain power that's being produced, uh, and then we can track our state of charge of source. This is a little bit easier to look at, but maybe not so, so great. We could also plot out the results. Let's do that just to get a clear picture. So here we see the results of this simulation. Uh, the blue shows the power level that is being produced at each, at each uh, time period. Here's the price that it's trying to optimize against. And here's the level of storage that's available. So just as a, a person making the decisions about when to generate, you know, you'd look and you'd see, yeah, I, I really want to target this high price period. Um, but maybe there's some periods where it's not so clear uh, whether or not you want to, to operate, right? I mean, you have this uh, storage coming in or energy coming in. Um, you have a maximum amount in storage that you can tolerate. So this, uh, while still a relatively simple scheduling problem, gives kind of a, an interesting result or an interesting um, uh, uh, profile that maybe we wouldn't have expected uh, if we were just um, manually scheduling production. So this is our um, slightly more complicated problem using linear formulation. Uh, and next time, we're going to actually get into um, integer variables and how we can deal with those.